Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Well, well, well. <laughs> it's a good thing I wasn't ready because um, I don't know what to say. All of a sudden, there was a flood of photos of our Duchess at some variety function. I mean, it came in so fast, I didn't even get a chance to see what it was all about. Uh, let me see, variety. Okay. What was going on tonight? Hmm. Let me see, let me see. Just want to see what was going on tonight. Okay, there it goes. Meghan Markle, uh, Billie Eilish, Emily Blunt, and more arrived for Variety's Power of Women's Red Carpet. Power of Women Red Carpet. That's what the occasion is. So, uh, hey, Judy Matasset. Oh, by the way, Amelia Rodriguez, thank you so much for being here first. Um... Uh, Dansby, okay, I see a bunch of people. I'm just going to go ahead and scroll through and uh, get to the very last. Hello, Lydia Washington. I see you're here. Uh, Kellyanne Phillips. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, Deidre Mikey, hello. I promise you, if I wasn't here, I probably would have... Um, come back on again <laughs> just to celebrate the moment with everybody else. Um, that is likely what would have happened. Um, no doubt about it. Um, yeah. Who knew this was coming, huh? No doubt. I not. ask you who knew this was coming. Oh, by the way, let me do this. Let me do this. Before I forget, and I will get to the pics. And guess what? I even have a little video for you. So uh, let's see. Uh, variety. Okay. Okay, that. Okay. Ha! All right. Good to go. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. Megan looks uh, fresh and natural, minimal makeup, simple hair, just breathtaking. Uh, Rohini, I agree. V.S. Speaks Royally. Hey, V.S., I'm headed to the Slumberland, but wanted to say hello. Drop a comment and thumbs up. Thank you so much, V.S. Okay. All right. Let's 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 get to the other pick, shall we? Ha! There we go. And, of course, the uh, people that Megan has sued and won, the, of course, they couldn't wait to splash her on the front. Uh, but take a look there. Fresh, clean makeup, uh, very minimal earrings. Um, yeah, just just youthful glow, aging gracefully, fit, tone, healthy, elegant. Um, I can't think of any more adjectives. But yeah, she she looks absolutely stunning. <laughs> Huh. And just a little flirty, a little over the shoulder, just a little flirty look. There you go. There you go. Now, um, are you now warning flash photography? I don't know why they always say that, but warning flash photography. I think it has something to do with people that um, you know, have an adverse reaction without saying where, hey Leslie F, welcome back. Okay, okay, okay. You ready? Warning, flash photography. Here goes. Thank you. 
All right, so there you go. There was only sound at the end, only sound at the end, but we're all good. So let's see here. <laughs> oh, you love it? Me too. Me too. All right, take a look. Here's a couple more. What a surprise. Was not expecting this tonight. Definitely wasn't expecting this tonight. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I don't like to do the thing where you just wait and wait and be like, okay, now let's get to those photos. I, I, I don't have enough patience for that myself. If there's something really big, we're going to jump right into it. No dragging it out, I promise, never. Uh, let's see, the derangers are going to lose their minds for sure. For sure, they are going to um, break dishes, roll up on the sidewalk, all kind of nonsense. Uh, yes, Megan letting them know how it's done. Rohini, what I love about this, this look is that even though there are some royal princesses, uh, aka duchesses or whatever, that feel like they have to go more, you know, bigger hair, more theatrical makeup. And we all know that Megan can do that look. Megan is more than adept at giving you that look. But when she wants to be very subtle and elegant and, you know, just keeping it very minimal, as, as everyone has said, keeping it very minimal. Um, it really respects her, her position um, with the royal family as the daughter of Doria Raglan and an and African-American woman, all of those things. You know, just keep it cute. You don't have to go for the theatrical. You don't have to go with bigger hair and wigs and extensions. And, you know, I'm not speaking of anybody in particular. I'm just saying there are those kind of people. Uh, Baron, there are no leaks at Montecito. There never is, is there? There's no leaks at Montecito. Thank you so, for the, uh, so much for that, Deirdre Mikey. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Leg says, our girl killed. Megan has moved on. Love it. I do too. I do. What a surprise. And just at the right moment, as we all were coming together anyway at 10 o'clock Eastern. No, no, no. Uh, Central time. Uh, and I look up. I look at it about maybe a quarter to. And I'm just like, what the what? <laughs> what the what? I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. I got to grab those. As a matter of fact, um, let me go back to the to the video here. Going to. There we go. Most of the video doesn't have sound. But. Uh, oh, yeah. By the way, flash photography warning. <laughs> and you know I promise you that all of the magazines just like every time uh, Megan steps out all of the magazines are going to praise this look they're going to praise this look simple, chic, elegant, understated just enough just enough yeah, just enough. Perfection. Regal. Regal. Didn't they just say that somebody else was regal the other day? I, I, uh, it, it, I, it escapes me. But uh, perfection. Perfection. 
for a young lady struggling to find her voice. Um, thank goodness there's somebody like Megan to look up to, to aspire to, to, to emulate, if you will. Thank goodness for, for Megan. Because I tell you right now, there's a lot of young ladies that are just getting the wrong message. They're getting the wrong idea about what it means to be an adult, to be independent. They're, they're getting the wrong idea. This is the right idea. This, this Megan has it right. Empowering other women, supporting other women. Um, you know, when you want to turn it up, you can do that. If you want to downplay it, you can do that. And look amazing at every turn. That's, that, is, um, that is the magic that is the Duchess of Sussex, is that she can turn it up or she can turn it down. Um, it just depends on, on, on the mood. You know, she can play uh, into that moment, that mood, whatever, wherever she is at that point, you know. Um, like uh, here, you know, hair down, breezy, fun, um, wearing the community T-shirt, never takes herself so serious. And I love that about her. I absolutely love that about her is that it's just not a lot of fuss. And, of course, as we know, our Duchess uh, loves to be comfortable. She definitely she doesn't like stuff that is so binding and so tight or anything like that, you know, just keep it cute. Keep it cute. The only tight she wears is tight jeans, and that's it. Nothing nothing else. Nothing is so confining and restrictive. None of that stuff. So I I am um I I, I admire her taste. I really do. Uh and and take a look here. Didn't I just share these photos from um oh gosh let me get rid of them, people. Let me go through. Wow, what did I do? Okay, so that's that. It's very much like she was um, when they went to the, um, what do you call that thing? Right? Very much. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Sorry about those other people. But there you go. Take a look at there. Right? And this, of course, is when uh, Megan was uh, pregnant, right? She was heavy with child. Um, hair back in the bun. Uh, very minimal jewelry. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Has time stood still? Uh, Connie Palmer! Connie Palmer! We had a nice surprise tonight. We had a nice surprise, Connie Palmer. Let me roll a video for you. Again, flash photography. Flash photography. Attentionis. Flash of photography. Attentionis. <laughs> Yes, like the uh, the lady in uh, Italy yells when she sees those pickpockets. Attentionis, a flash of photography. <laughs> Attentionis. Uh, oh, my goodness. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There's... Maureen, thank you so much for the belated birthday gift. Thank you so much. And thank you for being a member and for watching Royal Sussex. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. This, I, You know what? I thought all of the birthdays were, were done until next year, and then you, you came with this. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, it, it really takes the sting out of being a year older. <laughs> And thank you so much for being here tonight. Look, and I'm still getting birthday gifts. Let me show you what I got. I got this and this and this and this. Aha. Uh -huh, and that. <laughs> it really is a happy birthday. Check it out. 
Yeah, so all you Scorpios, look at what we got for this November. A variety night out. A variety night. Uh-oh, I'll get to that soon. But thank you so much again. And Susie Q says, our Princess Megan looks gorgeous. Kathy G says, I could wear that dress with a couple of Spanx and a girl. <laughs> Oh, man, that's funny. Uh, let's see. She wore a similar color, heavenly, heavily pregnant, that is, in Morocco, right? Oh, I remember her being in Morocco, but I don't remember what she wore. Um, But I do recall that uh, the people, the, the royal family in Morocco was like, ah, we want Meghan and Harry. We want Meghan and Harry. Don't send those other jokers. Megan is so stunning. It's your thing, Megan. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. Hey, it's your thing. Ow! Do what you want to do. <laughs> She's every woman fits all your needs. Anything you want done, baby? <laughs> ah, Nafisa Shabazz, thank you so much for being here. Peace and blessings to everyone. I know she's glad she's home. You can see it in her eyes. I'm happy for her and Harry. Absolutely. Absolutely. How stunning. Now, uh, let me go and take a look at the Twitter and see if I need to grab any more photos. And if I can find something I haven't shared, I will share it with you. Uh-oh, there's one right there. Okay, there's one. So, yeah, give me a second, you guys. Let me grab a couple of these photos because uh, you know, <laughs> you know, um, they, uh-oh, 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 okay, sorry. Uh, let me... Let me run the video. Let me run the video because I need to go into a chat because that's where they have a lot of photos. So I'm going to mute myself and and run the uh, video. And then I'm going to go and borrow a couple of photos from them. OK, give me just a second.
Okay, I'm back. Let me kill this music. Let me get rid of this music. Oh, 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 stop, stop, stop. Oh, boy. I know that was about to drive you cuckoo. All right, so I did grab a couple of things. Let me put them on a slide, and I will share it with you uh, in just a moment. Uh, let me see here. Okay, concentrate, concentrate. Get back over here. All right, create a new slide. All right, I'm almost there, you guys. Give me just a second here. Found some really nice photos. Um, the the girls on Twitter, I'm telling you, they are ninjas. They are very expert when it comes to grabbing uh, photos. So, but they were in a chat and I have to protect their privacy. So I had to, um, you know, I had to mute myself. Am I still muted? No, 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 I'm, I'm not muted. Okay, almost done. Give me just a second, you guys. Got just a couple more to grab. Oh, I love this one. Love that. Love it. And uh, that one. Okay. Maybe one more. Maybe one more. Let me see. Okay. Okay. And yeah, one last one. One last one. I got six new photos for you. Uh, patience, please. Patience, please. Oh, Lord, didn't mean to do that. Okay. Now, let me pop these on the black background and we are good to go. All right. As uh, Wesley Snipes said in Passenger 57, remember that? No, I do the purple background. As he said, always bet on black. So that's what I'm doing. I'm betting on black. <laughs> Am I showing my age? As Wesley Snipes said in Passenger 57, always bet on black. Okay, okay. And incoming slides. Incoming, incoming. Let me get back to the chat. Okay. Oh, thank you so much for your patience, everyone. Uh, here we go. There we go. Um, yeah, is that the new one? Okay, yeah, that's new. Oh, Connie Bomber. Thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for being a member of Royal Sussex. Okay, there's that one. And ha. Okay, one more. Ha. Love this. Love this. That's where all the shouting is coming from. So, gives you a little behind the scenes look of these things. B. Martin says, gorgeous and unbreakable. Do you, princess? That's right. Thank you so much for the super chat. And here, yeah, stopping the conveyor belt stunning, absolutely. And a big wide open grin. <laughs> Somebody must have said something humorous, but uh, there you go. So let's see, was that, oh, there's one. Yeah, this this is the last one. I knew I had six, there you go. That is number six. But yeah, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The um, the chats, the, the, um, the spaces on the social media app formerly known as Twitter is a buzz. I mean, people that were about to go to bed has jumped back up. People that were sleeping have been awakened. <laughs> All right, from London, uh, from South Africa, and so on, all the way to California. Everybody is up and alert to see uh, the photos that came out. Love that. Yeah, it is those kind of moments when I just love when we come together as a community. 
<laughs> ah, very nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, Cookies and Cream says that's what freedom and toxicity free looks like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Megan will be front page news tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Scroll back at a couple of your comments here. Uh, Catherine Bryan says, there will never be another Megan. She represents all women. Tyler Perry was a message from God, and he can move mountains. I'm into that. I'm into that. Hello, Rosa Roberts wants to say hi to a few people. And let's see. That's not for me. That's not for me. Oh, uh, Josephine Atwood says, Salty Island is real mad. Go, Megan. You look gorgeous. <laughs> oh, man. This is too much fun. Uh, Maggie House says tabloids will make money tomorrow and the trolls are going to lose their minds. Yeah, they're going to be up all night uh, photoshopping and, and splicing and everything. <coughs> and let's see. I know, Rohini, I know. But the thing is, when there's nothing like super big happening, I have all of that slides and stuff I put together and um, you know and I don't really stop until I have about 40 slides and then I'm like okay that looks like a Royal Sussex to me I wish I had um, had like uh, an assistant that would be so helpful if I had an assistant of course I don't think Royal Sussex is that kind of channel yet you know what I mean but, yeah, some people have, like, a team. Uh, let's see. Lorna Williams says, Squatty's YouTube app is a mess. I couldn't download the latest update today. Also, Android Web View wouldn't download. Just letting know in case uh, you are having trouble. Okay. Yeah, you know, every time um, our devices do one of those updates, you, they do a lot of software updates, and then they usually follow uh, very quickly with another because, as you know, they still have quite a few bugs they need to work out. So, um, but you know, it is is part of the process, I guess. Uh, Harlem girl, uh, April May, thank you, moderator. Zapping out trolls is something hilarious to watch. Glad I'm on your side. Uh, hey, Deborah Anderson. Uh, okay. Let me see here. Princess Megan is rocking like nobody's business. Okay. So for those of you that just joined us, let us run the video again. Most of it doesn't have any sound. Also, be advised that there is flash photography. There is flash photography. There we go. Ha! Huh. There we go. There is some flash photography. Tonight's event is brought to you by Lifetime Variety Cadillac Wells Fargo, where we always lose your money. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, wait, there's some sound. Yeah, here's some sound. Wait. Okay. One more, one more. Hang on, Megan. Hang on, Megan. Yeah, so Megan's lost all that baby weight. I thought she looked good with a few extra pounds, just a few. 
I'm sure Harry has his ideas about it, but um, <laughs> either way, either way. But yeah, she um, she's lost all that baby weight now. Uh, let's see. I read Megan was set to be honored at this event last year, but missed it because the queen died. Oh, is this that same event? Oh, yes, I remember. It was something, but I thought it was just something that, um, well, it was never confirmed that she would go. I thought that this was that event, but maybe this is something else. But, oh, okay. Well, thanks for that reminder. Uh, Megan is finally feeling free. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, let's do a Madam Duchess to celebrate, shall we? Let's do a Madam Duchess. I am not headed to go and get a cookie. I'm just going to play Madam Duchess, I swear. This is not an excuse for me to walk away. Um, here goes. Because indeed, service is universal. It sure enough is. All right. Okay. <clears throat> I am going to go and take another peek just to see if there's a couple more photos. I won't stay away as long as I did last time. But let me go and take a peek. And if I can find anything, I will share it. Promise. Oh, somebody's doing an interview, but I don't think I can share that one. Megan, in the beginning. Hang on, Megan. Hang on, Megan. Megan, say that thing. Oh, you know. Megan, darling. Hang on, in the beginning. Megan, say that thing. Hang on, Megan. Hang on, Megan. Megan, say that thing. Oh, you know. Megan, darling. Yeah, uh, but uh, just for FYI, if you want to know uh, who the interview is. Oh, there's a couple photos. Okay. Okay. Let me grab those. <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. Who shot John? Let me grab these right quick. I knew I'd find something. These are photos from like the inside with the tables and everything. Um, all right. Okay. All right. I got three. That's three. Oh, somebody's already did one of those sketches. Okay, that's four. Five. All right, I got five. Let me refresh and look for a couple more, and I will share those with you. Wow, what a, what a surprise. What a surprise. When I was not expecting any of this tonight. Did not, well, of course, as before mentioned, there are no leaks in Montecito. And that is why we had no clue that this was about to happen. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Okay. So I think that's seven. Okay. Let me throw these on my slides and I will get right with you. 
In the meantime, let me start that video again, this one, while I grab those uh, and put them on the slide. Okay. Megan in the beginning. I wonder what that means. At the start of the line or what? Okay. Okay. Almost there. Let me see. Oh, oh, oh. Was about to miss those too. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of throwing these on here any kind of way. Um, so just to make sure we got them. Ha! All right, got it. Coming back over. Coming back over. All right, let me. Bring the slide up. Watch this one more time while I grab the slide. Okay. Phew. <laughs> I wish you could see my little dexterous hands moving around here trying to do this. Oh, Dan Speed, you know what? You just gave me an idea. I can play the sound from the interview. That way I don't get the copyright infringement. I can play the sound. You are so genius. Thank you. Let me let me do that. Let me do that. Um, wow. Brilliant. I didn't think about that until you just said something about the interview. Entertainment industry. Why has that been? Okay. Because you are you are one of our power of women honorees. You are one of our alumni. And <laughs> we're so thrilled because this is night that is about supporting women and the idea that it's important to do so, especially in the entertainment industry. Why has that been so important for you to have that support and to give that support back? Oh, gosh. I mean, this industry is just so special. And you see how many women use the platform that they have and just channel it for good. And I think as more we support each other, it just amplifies the work, amplifies our community. I'm just thrilled to be back in it and to be able to sit in this room, be in such good company tonight, and also to focus so much on how it's the crossroads of entertainment meeting philanthropy. So really close to my heart. It's going to be a fun night. It's going to be a really good time because it's full of women whose art has inspired us all this year. But I will say, I'm sure you've probably noticed that a certain show, Suits, has become a phenomenon yet again on Netflix. 45 billion minutes have been watched. 45 billion as of this week. We just found out 24 minutes ago that that is the number. Who's counting? But, but literally, who's counting? What do you think is behind this, this renewed love for the show? Why has it become such a phenomenon again? I have no idea. It's, it was great to work on. Such a great cast and crew. We had a really fun time. I was on it for seven seasons, so quite a bit. But it's just, it's, it's hard to find a show you can binge watch that many episodes of these days. So that could have something to do with it. But good shows are everlasting. That's what you're doing now. You have now come into Hollywood in a professorial capacity. What is inspiring you? And, and as you're kind of looking to make these new projects, what is the thing that is, you know, driving the, the work that you're going to put out into the business? Things that make people feel, I was going to say good, but it's more than that. Things that make people feel something, right? And feel a sense of community. But we have so many exciting things on this slate. I can't wait until we can announce them. But um I'm just really proud of what we're creating. My husband is loving it too. It's really fun. We're here anytime you want to make those announcements. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We'll figure out. We'll, we'll get in touch then. Yeah. You're okay. thrilled to have you here as one of our our honorees, our alumni. So nice to see you. Thank you so much. Ha! 
<laughs> okay. I will say, I'm sure you've probably noticed that a certain show, Suits, has become a phenomenon yet again on Netflix. 45 billion minutes have been watched. 45 billion as of this week. We just found out 24 minutes ago that that is the number. Who's counting? But, but literally, who's counting? What do you think is behind this, this renewed love for the show? Why has it become such a phenomenon again? I have no idea. It's, it was great to work on. Such a great cast and crew. We had a really fun time. I was on it for seven seasons, so quite a bit. But it's just, it's, it's hard to find a show you can binge watch that many episodes of these days. So that could have something to do with it. But good shows are everlasting. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, your patience. Well, that was the interview. That was with Variety. Uh, thank you, Lex, for the super chat. Wow, the trolls are out in force. <laughs> Why are you trying to make me smile? You know I forget to put my lip balm on. I'm going to split my lip again tonight. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure they are. <clears throat> they are um, probably a little salty because um, they were so sure that that little uh, speech that somebody gave the other day, by the way, um, in regards to that speech, uh, we did uh, reach out to, uh, <laughs> should we reach out to Kensington Palace? Yeah, we did reach out to Kensington Palace. <laughs> Just to put a sharper point on the speech, because there were certain elements of the speech that, for the life of me, I still don't understand. So um, pardon me while we uh, reach out to uh, Kensington Palace. <laughs> Woo! Pardon me while I reach out to Kensington Palace. <clears throat> oh, you know what? <clears throat> they might be lucky tonight because for some reason I can't find Kensington Palace. And I really wanted to reach out to them. I promise you I did. But uh, uh, Kensington Palace, um, if, oh, there, there's Kensington Palace. Let's reach out to them for a little clarity. <laughs> well, obviously it'd be, um, I would love to have met her. Um, and and she's obviously, she's, a, she's an inspirational woman to, to look up to. Um, obviously, on the to this day, and you know, going forward and things, you know, it is, you know, it's a wonderful family. The members <laughs> who I've, I've met have achieved a lot, and you know, very inspirational. So, um, Woo! Yeah, I do. Yes, going forward in that, you know, you got to go forward. That's what we're doing tonight. We're moving forward. <laughs> Some of the members of the family that I met had achieved a lot. <laughs> and so going forward in that, um, oh, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know why that never gets old, but it never does. I never not feel uh, tickled when I reach out to Kensington Palace for comment. <laughs> And and to be fair, and to be fair, I have to tell you, that was the best speech that Kitty has ever given in her life. The one that she did the other day, the one that uh, reportedly was plagiarized, allegedly from the little girl in Australia or New Zealand, wherever she was from. That was her best speech in life. And, um, you know, and she's only had 22 years to prepare for it. So I was impressed. Uh, <laughs> oh, my side is hurting. But um, yeah, like she say, obviously, it's a great honor, you know, uh, with the few family members that I met um, that have achieved a lot is, um, <laughs> you know, going forward and <laughs> going forward in that. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. Well, I tell you, without any cue cards or any prompting, 
I think our Duchess gave an amazing uh, response, uh, speaking about you know production and being on the other side of the camera. And if I should recall, Megan did say that there are some projects that she cannot wait to announce. Um, and the reason why nobody knows anything about those projects is because there are no leaks in Montecito. That's why they have no clue. And anybody who tries to convince you otherwise, well, you know what that makes them, don't you? A liar. They're, they're lying if they tell you otherwise. They ain't got no information, no inside track, none of that. We're in Montecito, baby. Nobody uh, rats you out in Montecito. Uh, <laughs> oh, I I love that the fact that the hate listeners are listening in right now. All of the hate listeners with their sour faces and their their unwashed legs and mattresses down on the floor. The ones that are trying to convince us that. Uh, the bed bug bites are actually uh, some type of rash. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, when uh, Christopher said, wash your legs, I thought I was going to fall out the chair. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're at it, get your mattress up off the floor. <laughs> Woo! I tell you, I am in such a good mood. Uh, Leg says, tampon, body, half, and half. Oh, tampon, body, half in, half out. Uh, nope. Okay. And those letters that you just said right there. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, uh, so that was, uh, that's what happened tonight. And um, yeah, I thought that was, I'm going to watch that interview that she gave again and again. Um, and pardon me if I just go ahead and, and do it one more time, because I loved it. I loved it. I'm going to play the the whole two minutes of it. I loved it. It was just... Let me find a good image of our Duchess for the interview. Uh, oh, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to play it one more time. I enjoyed it so much. Uh-oh. We'll get to that later. Oh, let me get to my other slides over here. There we go. As a matter of fact, why don't I just play the video while I do that? That's what I'll do. I'll play the video. I just want to hear that one more time. I got to hear it one more time. I loved it. You are one of our power of women honorees. You are one of our alumni. And <laughs> we're so thrilled because this is a night that is about supporting women and the idea that it's important to do so, especially in the entertainment industry. Why has that been so important for you to have that support and to give that support back? Oh, gosh. I mean, this industry is just so special. And you see how many women use the platform that they have and just channel it for good. And I think as more we support each other, it just amplifies the work, amplifies our community. And I'm just thrilled to be back in it and to be able to sit in this room, be in such good company tonight, and also to focus so much on how it's the crossroads of entertainment meeting philanthropy. So really close to my heart. It's going to be a fun night. It's going to be a really good time because it's full of women whose art has inspired us all this year. But I will say, I'm sure you've probably noticed that a certain show, Suits, has become a phenomenon yet again on Netflix. 45 billion minutes have been watched. 45 billion as of this week. We just found out 24 minutes ago that that is the number. But, but literally, who's counting? What do you think is behind this, this renewed love for the show? Why has it become such a phenomenon again? I have no idea. It's, it was great to work on. Such a great cast and crew. We had a really fun time. I was on it for seven seasons, so quite a bit. But it's just, it's, it's hard to find a show you can binge watch that many episodes of these days. So that could have something to do with it. But good shows are everlasting. That's what you're doing now. You have now come into Hollywood in a professorial capacity. What is inspiring you? And, and as you're kind of looking to make these new projects, what is the thing that is, you know, driving 
the, the work that you're going to put out into the business? Things that make people feel, I was going to say good, but it's more than that. Things that make people feel something, right? And feel a sense of community, but we have so many exciting things on the slate. I can't wait until we can announce them, but um, I'm just really proud of what we're creating. My husband is loving it too. It's really fun. We're here. Anytime you want to make those announcements. Okay. Right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Guys. We'll figure out. We'll, we'll get in touch then. Yeah. We're okay. thrilled to have you here as one of our our honorees, our alumni. So nice to see you. Thank you so much. Oh boy, I just love that. I love, love, love it. Welcome everybody. Thank you so. Everybody okay. Okay. So that's it. I just wanted to hear that again. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay. Uh, well, I got some more stuff to cover tonight. And, uh, oh, Vargas, thank you so much for the super sticker. Uh, but, you know, if you want to uh, chat about it while I'm doing the other stuff, and occasionally I will look up and see what's going on. Uh, trolls, subscribe and be useful. Yeah, mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, trolls. Go ahead and subscribe and make sure you hit the um un, un no what is it dislike button? Yeah. Make sure you dislike the channel. Uh subscribe and dislike. Yeah, please do that. Um, you know what they say, there's no such uh thing as a bad um dislike. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead and, and hate on the channel if you don't mind. Uh we appreciate that. Okay, so uh, Omid Scoby had quite a day today, and let's get this nonsense out the way. Endgame is about the current state of the British royal family. It's not uh, Meghan and Harry's book. I'm not Meg's pal. Uh, the Sussexes have nothing to do with it. Their story is a small part of a much bigger one you can read in 12 days. So what they're doing right now, the tabloid media is trying to cast this image that Omid is the Sussex's mouthpiece, which they've done for quite some time. And that, of course, you know, <laughs> Megan wrote the book. Megan always, well, she wrote Harry's book. She always gets her way. After all, she she's a Hollywood actress, and she writes all of the uh, the the good, positive stories, the ones that 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 that, that she approves of, uh, because you, it's always what Megan wants. Uh, Megan always gets her way because uh, uh, she's a Hollywood actress. And and she has cameras in her pocket so that they could record. Uh, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> so of course, of course, if you leave it to Angela Levin, the human troll, she is going to. I promise you. I promise you, she is going to go on GB News and swear that Megan wrote the book. She wrote Harry's book, and now she's written Omit Scobie's book. Megan wrote the book because she's a Hollywood actress, and she always gets her way. It's always whatever Megan wants. Megan gets. She's a Hollywood actress. So, um... <laughs> Oh, so, <clears throat> and of course, there was that surprise that so far the only reporter that has stood up for um, Omid has been, much to our surprise, Robert Jobson. Now, Robert Jobson and Omid Scobie, they have worked together doing um, the morning, uh, Good Morning America on ABC, amongst other things, but Robert Jobson probably makes some, you know, some nice money from ABC as Omid Scobie does. And who knows, maybe, um, you know, when they wanted to, I guess, have Omid 
do the coverage with someone. Maybe he suggested Robert Jobson. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But either way, a but then again, maybe Robert Jobson suggested him. But whatever the case may be, they had a nice little Laurel and Hardy thing going on. People liked them together. And so, uh, 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 you know, he, he said some nice things about Omen. He was being very adult about it, which is good because we all know that Robert Jobson can be a little shady sometimes. So I was glad for that. Um, you know, and it's not to say that um, I'm pretty sure none of us forgets the fact that Omen Scoby is a royal reporter. He is a journalist. And at his own admission, he is not a friend of the Sussexes. He's doing his job. That's it and that's all. So I'm going to take that at face value. I'm not going to make anything more or less about it. I'm just going to say that's the, the, the situation according to Omid Scobie. And, and, you know, and Robert Jobson has been adult enough to, you know, I, I won't say co-sign, but he's been adult enough to say the same thing. So, um, yeah, so that's it and that's all. Um, let me see. I'm trying to see if I can find that little sound bite with um, Robert Jobson. Don't see it right now, uh, but that's okay. Let me see if I search it. Robert Jobson. Robert, um, are you done with that Jobson? Oh, here we go. Now, Omid Scobie's new book, Endgame, will deal with allegations of race and bigotry within the royal family. The unofficial spokesman for Harry and Meghan, who wrote a biography of the couple called Fine... Okay, I'm going to skip past that because you know who that is. That's that girl that... Uh got on my nerves. I'm just going to go straight to uh, Robert Jobson. Because Harry and Meghan said they're not doing any more look back projects, perhaps that should apply to their friends too. Should that apply to, well, to I mean, Omar Scobie? I mean, he's a mouthpiece now. It was a mouthpiece. It's not a friend. I mean, he's just squeezing the last bit out of the, the orange. You know, it's as simple as that. It's going to be an interesting read. I like Omid. I like him. Personally, I work with him at ABC. Um, Good Morning America. Um, but, you know, to say he's their unofficial spokesman, that's pushing it, to be honest. I think and he has if, you read Spare, if you read Spare and you read other books, there, there were contradictions all the way through there. And I mean, always say he's, he did, he's not that. In, mm. I think he's a pretty good journalist. I think he gets on with it and tries to discover the best. And as an author myself of many books, I mean, I will read it with uh, great interest and I hope it sells bucket loads. Yes. Okay. Yeah, all so there you go. He said he likes Omid. He's not their mouthpiece. I read his other book. I hope he sells bucket loads. Good for you. Good for you. Now, somebody just said something about another interview. Let me see if I can find one. Let me see if I can find one. If I can find it, I will share it. If I can find it, I will share it. Let me see. Let me go to my uh, usual sources. Okay, that's a negative. Let me see. One of my other sources. Oh, I see it. I see it. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you, Dansby. Uh, I just found the other interview. Let me grab um, that. Uh... There we go. I'll do this one. Megan, how excited are you to be here tonight? Oh gosh, it's so great. You look stunning. That's so sweet. Mom's night out. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Megan, how excited are you to be here tonight? Oh gosh, it's so great. You look stunning. That's so sweet. Mom's night out. <laughs> okay, mom's night out. Let me see if I can grab another one. Uh, nope, not that. 
Hmm. All right, so that's that one. Let me see if I can grab one more. Because I know this one right here. She always has the latest. Oh, oh, I just found a couple of more photos. Just found a couple more photos. I'll share those with you very soon. Let me see. Just found a couple more. Great. Great. Uh, all right. Now, let me... Uh, <clears throat> Let me uh, get those photos on the thing here, and I will share them with you directly. Just a couple of, of photos from a distance, but you know what they say, a photo is a photo. Okay. Oh. Oh, I see what happened here. Let me see. Oh, I saved it to my phone. That's that's the problem. But that's no problem. Let me see. I can do this. I can do this. So, oh, there it, there it is. There it is. Whoop, there it is. Okay, so there's that one. And the next one should be coming any second now. Okay, come on, other photo. There it is. There it is. Got it. Got it. I got it. Oh, baby, I got it. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire, your desire. Got us on a mountain top, burning like a silver flame. I got it. Yeah, baby, I got it. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, do your thing, do your thing. <clears throat> oh, I hope I got it. Let me see. Let me see. That may not have worked. Yes, contact. There we go. You can see our Megan looks like she's back there at table number 12. Uh, in, the, in the foreground, there is Leonardo, da, uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. And I see Megan just back there behind him at, at another table. And here's another view. There you go. Same. Uh, yeah, pretty much the same. Uh, but yeah, there she goes. And I can't tell who she's sitting with back there. But uh, I guess I guess Archie's papa and Lily's papa is at home babysitting. Oh, well, not babysitting, but with his children, with the prince and princess. So there you go. With Prince Archie and Princess Lily. Uh Let's see. Power of Art says Megan and here, uh, Megan and Prince Harry prove we can, at many points in life, raise above haters. Thanks to squad watchers, trolls are taking a longer break from attacks on them. Yeah, you know what? They they a lot of them have kind of fallen off. Uh, a lot of them have kind of fallen off. Um, and their their channels are not as profitable as they have been. And there's a lot of infighting with the haters on the YouTube and on the Twitter. There's been a lot of disagreements, a lot of infighting there. So yeah, this is true that they they're kind of disbanded at at certain points. I could hear the Brits Paps uh, when Megan was posing because you can hear. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, Megan, hold on, <laughs> hold on, sweetie. So rude. <laughs> uh, now, uh, wasn't there some speech the other day? Did, did one of those other people in the family give some big speech? Or was was one of the members of the family at, at a, uh, in, in Manchester, was it? Surrounded by a, a lot of inner city people? 
you know, the kind of people that they wouldn't encounter in a million years unless they had to. And I guess they thought that was going to be on the front pages tomorrow. It's so sad and pathetic. I thought, I bet you they thought that was going to be the front page news tomorrow. Ha! Ah! Well, that ain't the case anymore. And of course, they thought they were going to spend all day tomorrow talking about Omit's book. Well, they probably still will talk about the book, but well, now we've given them something else to talk about, haven't we? Yeah, we've given them something else to talk about. This way they can give their um, conspiracies a rest. Oh, my goodness. I think I just found a couple of new photos. I have. I just found a couple of new photos. Wow, we. Huh. Yeah, I haven't seen these before. We'll share. We'll share. Okay. Okay. Give me a second, you guys. I will share those. Just found a couple more. How about that? All things come to those who wait. Love it. Okay. There's this. And this. Huh, well, it looks like I can put all these on the same slide, so that works out. Uh, huh, how come that one didn't go? All right, let me see. Got one more. Um, hmm. Okay. And this is the nicest one. I got to get this one. Give me a second. Let me grab this one. My um, my computer is being very fussy, but I got it. There we go. There we go. All right. Incoming. Give me just a second, you guys. Give me just a second. And I got uh, a handful of, well, just four new photos for you. <laughs> this is so much fun. I love doing this. Let me take a look at your comments while that loads. Uh, let's see. Megan was sitting uh, next to the chair of Universal Studio Group, Perlina Ibaki. Uh, she's the black woman in the all green uh, to Megan's right at the t Okay. Okay. I'm going to take another look. I'm going to take another look. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. What an informed group we have. What an informed group. Okay. Uh, photos are loaded. Uh, let me see. Hold on. We've seen that one already. I got to go here. There you go. There you go. Uh, so there's those two. I really like the one. Actually, I love her face on both of these. I love her face on both of these. Uh, okay. And those two. Those two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, those uh, four photos. Ha! There we go. All right. Let me take a look at a couple of your comments, and then I'm going to go back to Omen Scobie. I'm going to go back to Omen Scobie. Let's see. Rohini says this might uh, be off topic a bit, but Leo is kind of. Oh, OK. <laughs> oh, just a little bit, just a little bit. Big mama, because of Harry and Meghan is out and about everything else in England is out and at the bottom of the page. Uh-huh. Even the raw sewage bubbling up. On the streets. <laughs> oh, oh, the raw sewage bubbling up. Now that's enough about Uncle Gary Goldsmith. Speaking of raw sewage bubbling up, that's enough about Kate's Uncle Gary Goldsmith. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Okay, yeah, let me go back and take a look at those since you all have pointed out. So the guy in the blue jacket. So the lady in all green, let me see. Let me let me go take a look. Ah, okay, okay. So that's the one from Universal. And then the guy in the blue jacket, uh, is that the one on the right side of the frame, perhaps? Is that the one? Let's see. Now he's kind of looking away, or is he the one directly behind the number 12? I'm guessing it's the guy to the right side of the frame. Huh, okay. Looks like a fun night. Looks like a fun night. Uh, let's see, Megan didn't come to play. She came to slay. Ha, I love it. I love it. Kind of reminds me of uh, Nipsey Russell. Megan didn't come to play. She's come to slay. <laughs> I used to love Nipsey Russell rhyming everything. He didn't come to, I mean, she didn't come to slay. She came, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, okay, let me go back to Omit. Uh, yeah, they're going to try to pile up on Omit this week. But so this is why I'm so glad for tonight, because at least that had changed the conversation a bit. Because what they were trying to do, like right here, Royal Reporters, uh, says um, Kaiser Selovich, uh, she posted, Royal Reporters, the timing of Omid's endgame is utterly deplorable. Well, that's not her saying that, of course. That is a quote from, like right here. Um, they're, they're pal the other Royal Reporters are piling up on him. They are piling up on Omid Scobie. Uh, Omid Scobie's decision to piggyback the release of his new Prince Harry and Meghan Markle book on the King's 75th birthday and the sixth and final series of The Crown was branded deplorable today. So, again, that's not Kaiser saying that. She's quoting the royal reporters. Uh, royal journalist and author Phil Dampier told Mail Online we all know that Scobie is their mouthpiece and he gets his information directly or indirectly from the Sussexes. So anything which is hurtful to Charles, Camilla, or William and Kate uh, will just make things much worse. Let's put it uh, this way. I can't see Harry and Meghan coming over for a family. Oh, God, I think I'm really going to start that again. I can't see Harry and Meghan coming over for a family Christmas. The king has always left the door open for his son and will continue to do so. But in reality, if there are more serious allegations in Scobie's book, it will set back any chance of reconciliation. So that is from Phil Dampier. Now, listen, they have not read Omen's book. They are in possession of it. They are only like thumbing through the book, hoping to see Megan or Harry's name jump out. They have not read his book. They have not. They are only looking for, a, even if it was just two paragraphs that mentioned the Sussexes, they're going to claim that the entire book is about Harry and Megan to discredit the book and to get some clickbait and to uh, shift the blame to the Sussexes. And that way, whatever he says about the family, which according to Omen Scobie, the vast majority of the book has nothing to do with Harry and Meghan. It's the other people's story. It's called Endgame because it should, you know, according to what he said, I haven't read the book yet, but according to him, is about the state of the family and what they could possibly do to mitigate any further decline of the monarchy. My words, not his. And that's what the book is supposed to be about. And yes, there are, obviously, there are some portions of the book that will feature the Sussexes. But the vast majority of the book, according to Omid Scobie, is 
other stories, other people's stories, other little anecdotes and facts and figures or whatever, not focusing on the Sussexes. So let me finish with this one here. So if you look down there, royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams, you remember him, don't you, uh, said, the timing of this is utterly deplorable. Wait a minute. Didn't I just read deplorable? You see how they all have the same talking points? The timing of this is utterly deplorable. I think the Sussexes will have to think hard about whether or not Scobie is their spokesman or their friend. <laughs> it will be interesting to see if Harry and Meghan will still want to be associated with Scobie after this. Of course, the fact that it's been leaked to People magazine makes one wonder what's been going on behind the scenes. Well, that's all one could do is wonder. You know why? Because uh, Harry and Meghan are in Montecito where there are no leaks. And because of that, you are not privileged to their movement. You're not privileged to who they speak to. You're not going to get leaks from that institution, right? You're not going to get leaks from the royal family, from Clarence House, from Kensington Palace. You're not going to get those usual leaks. So therefore, you don't know what the Sussexes will and won't do. You don't know what their movements are. Now, let me show you who some of these royal reporters are. Uh, this is Dampier. They don't hear from him at all. Royal author Phil Dampier claims Phil, uh, I'm sorry, Prince Harry uh, ghosted friends from his old life. Well, you know, that's one of the, the things they'd like to throw that little trope around there to make people think that Harry is being uh, held against his will by some very financially wealthy independently wealthy, hardworking Hollywood types who probably have way more money than the Sussexes do, but that's not the point. Um, it's the fact that he's um, a prince of the realm and the fact that they can have... Actually, I'm not sure what they're supposed to be doing with him. Uh, I guess get their photos taken or whatever. But anyway, there's, there's some nefarious business going on with Harry and he's being controlled and and they're force feeding him uh, all type of things that's mind altering. He doesn't have a mind of his own. That's the whole point. Um, that's that's the, the narrative that's coming from Kensington Palace, among other places, is that Harry has been um, abducted, right? He is just, he's, he's the poshest prisoner in the history of, of kidnapping. He is the poshest um, abducted person that you could imagine. He lives in a huge mansion. He has that Audi and, and a Range Rover, a tennis court, a tea house, swimming pool, a view of the ocean, right? Um, and well, we see who some of his friends are and such. So yeah, he is the poshest prisoner I've ever seen. I should have it so hard. <laughs> Good night, Rohini. I should have it so hard. Please, Megan, please abduct me. Please take me to Montecito and force me to live in that stately palatial home. Uh, let me see. Yeah, poor rich loved prisoner Prince Harry. You got that right, that poor guy. You got that right, all tan and moisturized and wearing those um, Dior suits and how dare he. <laughs> He's been abducted and forced to wear Christian Dior. Oh, the humanity, oh, the humanity. Um, oh, and of course, if you take a look there, if you're wondering who else, it, you see Dampier is on the right side, you know who else is doing this interview, don't you? That is Lady C, if you haven't figured it out by now. Lady C is on the left side of Harry, and uh, Phil Dampier is on the right side. 
as you know, you never have seen the Grinch that stole Christmas and Lady C in the same room at the same time, have you? Tell the truth. You've never seen them in the same space at the same time. And so I know I might get in trouble for this, but it is of my opinion and mine alone that the Grinch that stole Christmas is Lady C. And Lady C is the Grinch that uh, st- <laughs> And Lady C is the Grinch that stole Christmas. You never see them in the same room at the same time. So uh, remember, you heard it here first. That is a Royal Sussex exclusive. Lady C is the Grinch. It is a startling, and I'm startled. Trust me, and when I tell you I'm startled, it is a startling uh, resemblance. Let me see. Uh... Wait, do I have that? Let me see here. No, I don't. You know what? This is, oh boy. You know, I'm on my smaller computer tonight and already things are going south. There are certain, uh, (laughs) there are certain files that I won't have privilege to. I may have lost a few things forever. I'm afraid, Um, or at least for a while, but that's okay. That just means I have to make more, right? Right. Okay. So anyway, let us move on. And who else? So that is uh, Richard Fitzwilliams. Uh, Tourists saw them, Meghan and Harry, security concerns, question after Queen's visit. Well, He was upset, just like a lot of people. Do you remember when Harry and Meghan went to uh, visit the Queen that time at Windsor? Um, Phil and um, Phil, Will and Kate were on vacation, but they're always on vacation. Charles was out of the country, and so someone the Queen trusts very much arranged to get the Sussexes in and out unnoticed. So. The tabloid media, they were furious. Do you hear me? They were furious at the fact that the Sussexes had made a visit with the Queen, unsupervised by any other members of the royal family or without a chaperone, if you will. Um, They had unfeathered access to the Queen. And that, oh, I'm telling you, right after that happened, the Queen was taken out of Windsor Castle and spirited to Sandringham. Do you all remember that? By by the end of the next day, she was already um, safely ensconced or imprisoned, if you will, in Sandringham, um, where they had the famous summit. That is where they moved the queen to. They were just, they were in so much shock. They were in so much shock because of that ninja move. The queen sitting up there playing senile. And then next thing you know, she got that burner phone out and arranged to um, have the Sussexes come to see her at Windsor Castle. I'm telling you, if that was the, the, and they had the kids with them. They had the kids, Archie and Lily. They went to see the queen. Oh, that was, that gave me my life. That move right there gave me my life. Do you hear me? That was the smoothest. That was the smoothest. That's why I always say, you guys, just just trust Harry. Let me, let me show you how the queen did that. Let me show you how it was done. Uh, where is it? Oh. Okay, if you're wondering how that happened, here you go. The queen was sitting up there in Windsor Castle. Now, you see, that is an analog phone. Nowadays, we're all using digital cell phones or mobiles, if you will. They didn't know that somewhere in the queen's office, 
she still had that old Motorola brick phone uh, fired up and ready to go. And so this is how uh, Harry was able to call his grandma and arrange to meet her by using that old Motorola. <laughs> <laughs> by using that old Motorola burner phone, one that none of the um, courtiers knew exist. You know, they say, if there's something you want to hide, put it in your underwear drawer, right? So I suppose under all of those corsets and all of those um, petticoats and everything, she must have had that burner phone tucked under there. And that is how they were able to arrange the meeting. <laughs> Woo! That is how they managed to do that. Okay. <clears throat> so, so that's Richard Fitzwilliam. That's one of the people that got caught in that lie before the Oprah Winfrey interview. And see, there they go. There's Richard Fitzwilliams. There's Dickie Arbiter. There's Victoria. I've just lost my lashes, Arbiter. And of course, um, uh, Ingrid Seaward, Seaweed, Seaward, something like that. Um, there she go, uh, Ingrid. Now, Ingrid. If you think that Lady C is weird, Ingrid bears a striking resemblance to Deputy Dog. I mean to tell you, you've never seen is that is that is that his name? Deputy Dog? Deputy something. Um that's that Hannah. Yeah, she has a striking resemblance to one of those Hanna Barbera uh, characters. Hanna Barbera dog. Yeah, she she bears a striking resemblance. Let me see. Hanna Barbera. <laughs> oh, his name is Droopy. His name is Droopy. Yeah, she bears a striking resemblance to that Hanna Barbera character, Droopy. So it's a who's who. It's a motley crew of reporters. Uh, and of course, that's Vicki Arbiter uh, before uh, and after, before the lashes and after the lashes. She was so stressed out by being exposed by those uh, YouTube pranksters that she said she hadn't been able to eat or sleep. And remember I told you that... Um, Robert Jobson had that nice job with ABC. Well, that's what Victoria Arbiter used to do. She used to do that same thing on ABC. And, and no, 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 I'm sorry. She was on CNN. I'm sorry. She had her gig on CNN. But because of that, her lashes fell out. Um, she wasn't able to eat. She lost her um, insurance and everything. Oh, it was a disaster. All of that for 300 pounds. They paid her 300 pounds, those pranksters. And um, and they all got caught up in a ring of deception. Now, according to them, that this is um, something that is typical on television, that you would uh, make up a, the interview before, you know, the, you'd make up uh, uh, the interview before the event actually happens. But CNN said that somehow that violated something in their policy and they let her go. So I'm telling you, they were making so much money off of Harry and Meghan. Now, to be fair, Victoria Arbiter was not the worst of them. She did perpetuate a certain narrative, but I wouldn't say that she was vicious. Her father was kind of nasty and negative, but... She wasn't the worst of them. However, she's still one of them. And you know how that is. You know how they say, oh, it's not because Megan's color. We didn't even know she was black. It's just an anti-American sentiment. Like that makes it better. 
oh, okay, she's not just American, she's a black American. That's the problem. That's what they're really saying. Well, um, you know, that that's 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 what it is. That they they seem to have it in for well, for a lot of reasons, but let me continue. <sighs> so um she did an interview with um Camilla Tomini of all people where she was saying how horrible things were for her now. And um, well, like I said, and it's because of you all. It's because of the Sussex squad. It's because of the Sussex squad that a lot of those people are not making the big profits they used to. They're not making the big profits they used to. The Sussex squad hit them in them pockets really hard. And they haven't had that easy, you know, time that they were having before. They don't have it as easy as they used to. So go Sussex squad. Yep. You can take credit for that one. Uh, Thomas, I wanted to ask you about these vile individuals who refer to themselves as the Sussex squad. So I come to my dad's house and start going through it. And I look on YouTube and my God, I see the, the, the Sussex squad and, and the Royal Sussex page on YouTube and the things they post. And that's where I found that disgusting video making fun of my father just because he's going to the Jubilee. I mean, and if you look on the Royal Sussex page on YouTube, you're going to see exactly whose it is. It's definitely Meghan Markle. And, it, and if it's not her personally, she's definitely paying somebody to do it. <laughs> it's so comforting to know that Thomas Marco Jr. watches Royal Sussex. Hey, Thomas. <laughs> Little Tommy Mark Hill Jr. is watching Royal Sussex. Yes, the Sausage Squad. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, Thomas, have you heard of these vile individuals known as the Sausage Squad? I mean, he says it with such disdain, the Sausage, the sausage Squad. Oh, and by the way, uh, you guys, the last characterization that I want to share with you, did you all know that Dickie Arbiter was actually the model used to create that famous uh, painting, Scream. Yeah, that was Dickie Arbiter. Dickie Arbiter actually sat for Scream. Yeah, I guess he's much older than what he appears to be, but he was literally, if he wasn't the model, he was at the very least the inspiration. Um somebody took a good look at him and 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 screamed and said, you know, I think I have an idea for a painting. So yeah, that's, uh, but they all, see, they're all famous in other ways. They're all famous. One of them was the inspiration for Scream. Another one um, lost their lashes. That's a nice parlor trick, right? And then of course, one of them is <laughs> One of them inspired a Hanna Barbera. <laughs> One of them inspired a Hanna Barbera character. So they they're all famous in their own right. They didn't really need the royal family to be famous. If it wasn't for the royal family, I'm sure they could have gone on to create other characterations. Whether it's the Hanna Barbera character or the Grinch, they all seem to have their moments uh, long before they became useless royal reporters. So, uh, <laughs> well, listen, listen, we need to thank Dickie Arbiter because ben under that veneer of nasty, negative, banter. Over here, on the one hand, he says, it's about time the Duchess of Cambridge was recognized as a workhorse 
and not a clothes horse, it doesn't matter what she's wearing, what's important is what she's doing and why she's in Denmark. So to this day, I promise you, we still don't know why Kate went to Denmark. The people of Denmark don't even know what she was there for, right? Kate has no idea why she went to Denmark. Her staff thought it was a way to make her look important. And to date, to date, after being married into that family for what, 11, 12 years? Going on 13, no, 12 years. It's 12 years. Going on 13 years next year. She's been in that family for 13 years and only once, and that was what, uh, February of 2022, only once has she ever left the shores of the United Kingdom to make an official royal visit unaccompanied by her husband. Yeah, that was the one and only time. And of course, one of the ways they managed to uh, entice her to show up, it, you all remember she was at that uh, indoor playroom. I think it was like some kind of kids gymnasium or something. There was that video of her sliding down the sliding board and all the bright, vivid colors, you know, stuff that helps to stir the imagination of a child. Well, that's, that's where she ended up. That's the way they got her to go was to tell her she could play with the other kids. So there she was in Denmark. And to date, I promise you, I'm not just making it up. Google it if you want to. You will never figure out why she was in Denmark. It was just like the other day where she gave that two-minute speech where she looked up and down at the paper about 50 times for that two-minute speech. The same thing. It's just one of those vanity projects to make it look like Kate is busy. That's it. That's it. Now, on the other side of the slide, you can see there, Meghan Markle's private message handed over with William's approval, palace veteran. Um, the palace veteran is Dickie Arbiter, who used to be the press secretary for the Queen. He said that there was no way, it was like virtually impossible that they would have handed over Meghan's letter to the tabloids lawyers, the tabloid, of course, being the Daily Fail, there was no way that would have happened without the consent of William and Kate, meaning that whatever, um, I, I guess, um, what is that they call it? Confidentiality agreement or assumption of privacy that they would have with Jason Knopf. Jason Knopf was given authorization from William and Kate. Listen closely now. William and Kate would have had to have given him authorization to turn over, not the letters, I'm sorry, the emails, a selected group of emails, the ones that they thought would be enough to, um, I guess, put the Duchess of Sussex in the bad light, um, those hand-selected emails. And of course, when Megan's lawyers reminded them that they also had access to emails and that they might uh, be in a different context to what the Daily Fail had used at the trial, then all of a sudden, uh, Jason Knopf, uh, you know, at that point, Jason Knopf said he was the co-author of the letter, right? As though Megan needed his help to write a letter. Then all of a sudden he had to retract that because he didn't want to get cross-examined by uh, the very powerful law firm that represented the Duchess of Sussex. You see, guys, Megan has had a lawyer in Beverly Hills for years, long before she married into that uh, family of misfits. She already had a lawyer, a very good lawyer. Um, and of course, when you have a good lawyer, even if it's not their expertise, they will recommend you to another attorney. 
they'll get you in touch with people that can help you. And they were about to drop a deuce when they saw um, Megan's lawyer at work. So it's always good to have great legal representation. Next. So um, is nothing sacred? Is nothing sacred, they ask. Well, Omid Scobie tweeted earlier today. This was his other tweet today. I'm sure the many victims of the mirror's alleged phone hacking have asked the same thing. Is there nothing sacred? Did you all hear that? Get him, Omid. Omid could be very, very snarky when he wants to. Let me do that one more time. Is there nothing sacred, they ask. Omid Scobie says, I'm sure the many victims of the mirror's alleged phone hacking have asked the same thing. Is there nothing sacred? Is there nothing sacred? Is there nothing sacred? So, again, they're trying to make the book about Harry and Meghan only. And the controversy surrounding the Queen's death and Harry's notification um, or lack of notification from the family, apparently Harry did not find out until it was read out on the BBC like everybody else. Now, I remember very clearly that they were trying to tell the world that Harry was not at the Queen's bedside, but William was there, um, Edward was there, uh, Sophie was there, right? Charles was there, Camilla was there. When the truth is, there was nobody by the Queen's side except for Princess Anne. Charles was setting up for an interview miles away at another property. And even though, and I'm gonna have to say this again, even though we saw the very frightening, fragile state that the queen was in when she shook hands with um, oh, Liz Truss, that would have been enough for me to say, I have to go and be with my parent. I have to go and be with my parent, not Charles. As usual, Charles left it to other people. Now, Anne stayed by her mother's side, given the very fragile state she was in. The fact that she was able to stand up and shake hands with the assistance of her staff, that is not surprising. There's no video of the queen shaking hands with Liz Truss. There's only a couple of grainy steel photos, not a video. So the fact the queen was standing, there's a lot of people that were standing up and walking and talking the day before they died. And the queen was one of them. But Charles was not there. None of them were there. But for several days, they tried to convince us that Harry was the only one who wasn't there. When the truth is, Charles made it in time, so they say, but he went out to forage for mushrooms. Looks like Harry's not the only one in the family that likes mushrooms. He went out and forged mushrooms. Again, that's, that's two times. Your mama's on TV and she's in a fragile state and you're not there. You go there, you see that she's in a fragile state and you say, you know what? Now is the time to go and forage mushrooms. So he goes out looking for mushrooms and then they came and told him, this is the report that uh, the queen is gone. She's dead. And then he goes back to the house. Now, I don't know which one of those are true, but I know one thing for sure. I'm very certain he was not with his mother when she took her last breath. There was nobody there but the doctors and Anne. And then you would think that night that Charles would have stayed at uh, Balmoral Castle, right? He and William went to go plot and scheme the rest of the day. And when Harry arrived, the only family member that was at the house was Anne. And Anne asked Harry, would you like to see her? 
And at first, Harry said, according to Spare, no. And then he thought about it. He said, yes. And he did go and spend some time with his grandmother. So I trust Harry's words. It was in Spare, right? He said that he spent some time with his grandmother. It was in Spare. Um, and was very civil and accommodating, right? And so um, with that, I'm just going to say it. If that was my parent that was in that state, I, there's no way in the world I would have been setting up somewhere for an interview. I would have been at my parents' side for the whole week, for the whole week before uh, she died. I would have been there. Not Charlie. Charlie was setting up for an in interview with one of those Bush girls for NBC television. Now, that's what happened. So whatever they're trying to spin in that book, uh, about the book, should I say, uh, they're not going to tell you the whole story. They don't want to tell you the whole story. Harry had to charter a private jet for 30,000 pounds to take him north to Balmoral. Um, and when he uh, got there, the queen was already gone. Now, for days, we were supposed to believe that he was the only one who wasn't there. But William was about 45 minutes late. William, um, Ford Fiesta, and um, Edwina, they were all late. None of them made it. None of them. The weather was really bad, and they they could not fly. I think it was from Aberdeen Airport. They couldn't fly to Balmoral. The weather was really bad. I'm not even sure Charles made it to Balmoral. I'm not really sure, and I'm going to tell you why. Because if the weather was too bad um, that afternoon then chances are it was still pretty bad that morning when he was setting up for that interview. Now, they say Charles was there, but he went out to forage mushrooms. I'm not sure I believe that. I'm not sure I believe it. I am not sure that that's exactly what happened. Royal courtiers were last night said to be furious over the revelation about Prince William and Harry's feud, which... Um, some what is that word there? Hold on, let me pull it down. Erupted, okay. Let me go back. Erupted as the queen lay dying. Palace insiders tore into author Omid Scobie over a string of claims he made about the pair's fractious relationship during a time of personal grief for the royal family. The writer, who was previously briefed by Megan for another of, and of course. That's a lie. For another of his books, alleges William ignored Harry's call as he desperately tried to get the late queen's, uh, get to that is the late queen's bedside. He did not make it either. He said there was no proof Charles phoned his youngest son during this, uh, his uh, grand's dying moments. And Omid's book, in game says of William, he feels he lost Harry and doesn't want to know this version of him. Scobie also said the prince is convinced his brother has been brainwashed by an army of therapists in America. <laughs> now that is a bunch of right wing uh, nonsense if I've ever heard it. <clears throat> There's an army of therapists that have abducted Harry. The Royal Insider said it appears no matter what happens behind closed doors, even in a time such as pain and grief, that uh, that's uh, where the royal family are. That where the royal family are concerned, um, uh, it will one day emerge. Nothing is off limits with William and Kate appearing to be the author's number one target. It only takes a few months for the knives to come out again 
and the wounds will be opened up. So they're trying to project the victimhood on Will and Kate when we all know that the leaks were coming from Kensington Palace, right? The leaks were coming from Clarence House, but for the most part, they were coming from Kensington Palace. As a matter of fact, uh, if you followed the byline investigates, uh, it has even been alleged that money has changed hands so that they can get leaks from the Kensington Palace, right? And see, if this is difficult to understand or hard to follow for the derangers and hate listeners, I know you're not going to believe me, but listen to this. William was the senior most um, member of the royal family at Kensington Palace. Charles didn't go by there. He didn't have a reason to. That was William's playground. That was William's little kingdom. And anyone on staff for the uh, royal household, uh, any of the courtiers that were there for Will and Kate or Harry and Meghan, the ultimate authority that they would have to answer to was Prince William. And so when William gave the signal to the courtiers, that it was okay to go after his brother. It was okay to go after his sister-in-law. It was okay to make fun of them and plot against them and to conspire against them. When the head person says it's okay, what do you think is going to happen? Same with the queen's household. As the queen was slipping away and Charles was regent in all but name only. In all but name only, Charles was a regent. I don't care what they say. It may not have been official, but Charles was a regent. He was the one in charge of the family. He was the one who allegedly slipped that document to his mother where she said on a session day 2022 in very frail health that from henceforth, I want you all to refer to her as the queen consort and give her the same loyalty and respect that you have given me, right? And that's what it was supposed to be, right? Queen consort. But before that, out of respect for Princess Diana and the people who loved her, Camilla was never supposed to be queen. She was only supposed to be called princess consort, just like Camilla was never known as princess of Wales. Even though she was, she was known as the Duchess of Cornwall. And just like everything else, it changed. It changed. They went on to say at the time of the coronation, you know what, that business about consort uh, we're going to drop that. Just call her Queen Camilla, the emotional support Queen Camilla. See how that works? They change stuff when it's convenient for them. And the queen, who was in frail health, was given a document in that famous red box, and she signed it and even said out of her own mouth, now, some people say that it's been alleged that the reason why the queen was being so cooperative is so that they would uh, protect, they meaning Charles, would lend protection and financial security and physical security to that vicious bowl of jello, that sick old man, Andrew, Andrew, the sick old man. And so far, Andrew still got his security. Andrew hasn't left that house. And Andrew still is living off the uh, public dole, the sovereign grant. None of that has changed. And it may have been a quid pro quo because of a session day 2022. And a session day celebrates the moment the queen 
became the queen, meaning that that was the day her father died some, uh, what, 70 years ago? 69, 70, yeah, 70 years ago. That was the 70, 70th anniversary of a session day. So there you go. There you go. Now, that's just a theory. We don't know any of that to be true, but it, it's good enough for me. Sounds like it's true to me. Right. The NDA, the non-disclosure agreement. Thank you very much. Kensington Palace is Williams residence. All employees sign an NDA in order to break the NDA and obtain and release Megan's letter. And don't forget emails to the tabloid. They have they had to have Williams permission. Exactly. And that is why I keep saying that the ultimate authority, the supreme authority of Kensington Palace is William, that he has a residence there. Charles doesn't have a residence there. Now, Charles, of course, could, you know, run roughshod on him if he wants to. But I think where William is concerned, Charles is a bit of a coward and doesn't challenge his son. I don't think William has ever been challenged by his father. Um, so I wouldn't suspect. And you know what? If I found out that my son had did a, uh, what do you call it? Had smashed through a window like some type of uh, Navy SEAL and uh, rolled across the floor and then jumped on top of my other son and, and broke a doggy dish and, and tore up the house, I probably wouldn't challenge him either. If I thought uh, that raging bull was going to come running in my house and I would be the one getting in trouble if I was to, you know, if I was to, I'll just leave it there. Then, of course, I wouldn't challenge him either because we all know who would have ended up in trouble. They would have uh, started plotting against Harry, saying that he had gone insane, and they probably would have had him locked up somewhere. He would have been one of the princes in the tower. So I'm glad Harry stayed cool throughout the entire ordeal, but I'm pretty sure Charles is afraid of him. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people in that institution that's terrified of him. So there you go. Um, Having uh, the excerpt from his book published, Scobie Overshadows Kate's Launch of uh, a Conference on Her Campaign for Children and Their Families Yesterday, royal fans speculated details from the book had been timed, oh, come on now, had been timed to mar Kate's work uh, for point. Uh, regularly leveled at the Sussexes over events. Um, Kate only spoke for two minutes. How do you just interrupt a two-minute speech? She had the big hair. She had the monochromatic suit. She had stilettos. She was grinning. She did all of that hand jazz. How could you possibly compete with that? <laughs> During the 75th birthday on Tuesday, a rare picture of the Duchess out with a friend were released and Meghan revealed she was pregnant uh, with her first child as Princess Eugenie's wet. Okay, lie, lie. Highly personal details about Queen's death last year outlined in uh, the book could only have come from someone present. Right. Someone present. Only someone present. Hello, hello, is this the Daily Mail? Senior Royal here, hello. I said, hello, Senior Royal here. No, I don't smoke <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no, that's not service, ma'am. Hello, Senior Royal here. Well, the only other senior royal present that I think would be willing to uh, rat everybody out is the emotional support, Camilla. 
That's the only senior royal I could think of that would rat out everybody. Let me see. Okay. All right. So that's that. And, um, oh, my goodness. There seems to be, there appears to be a message from Her Majesty from the Great Beyond. Can't miss out on that one. Hold on a second. Let me see. Um, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, uh oh. <clears throat> now, it says here, royal message. I, Queen Elizabeth II, ruler of the United Kingdom, and been gay rubbing cream. <laughs> Do hereby declare that it is not true. I changed it to queen because I knew she would be humiliated. My plan is working. Queen out. <laughs> uh, Your Majesty, before you go, what happened back in? Oh, 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 yes, yes. 1992. A year which I shot look back upon with undiluted pleasure. It was a horrible anus. Queen out. <laughs> oh, Sean, thank you so much for communicating with Her Majesty and the Great Beyond because, you know, if it wasn't for you, I would only have like Omid's book spare and a few other sources to bit to depend upon for the truth but thanks to you now we have heard it directly from her majesty so thank you so much uh for communicating with the uh great beyond i have to say that is one of my better impersonations i've done of the queen lately all right uh let's see oh let me i got up i can't see what's up there Oh, uh, what does it say up the top there? Let me see. On my screen, I can't see it, but I, I got it. I will find it. No worries. No. Oh, okay. There it is. It says Omit. Uh, okay. It says right here. Good Omit. Tell them loud and clear. They are just lying to discredit your book. Uh, if they are, I'm sorry, if you are the mouthpiece for the Sussexes uh, because you sometimes speak favorable of their work and call out their hateful media, the hateful media, who are all these people uh, to the palace. Okay, so what they're referring to is that collage, that collage of royal reporters. Boy, I tell you, if that doesn't look like some freaky looking puppet show, I mean, that is a, a very, that is a monstrous bunch of people if I've ever seen. All of them seem to be lacking some like chromosome or something. Um, they're, there's, they're, they all look like they're from the shallow end of the gene pool. So sorry, the photo is not larger, but, um, and just think of the spade of bad luck that they've had, broken backs, shingles, um, loss of lashes, loss of income. Um, what else? A couple of them fired themselves from good paying television jobs. Remember that? Um, what's his name? Fired himself from Good Morning Britain. And then Sharon Osbourne, she fired herself. I mean, she didn't even wait. Neither one of them waited. They just like, I don't have to take this and just run up out of there. And poor Sharon Osbourne, don't you dare cry. You better not cry. Don't you dare cry. I mean, she hadn't even said anything and, and already, don't you dare cry. You better not cry. I was like, what's wrong with her? 
So they 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 see they tend to fire themselves. That's what they do. They fire themselves. You don't even get a chance to confront them. And next thing you know, they're either walking out or having a meltdown. And next thing you know, when they try to come back, they're like, you know what? Uh, we're good. We're good. Now, um, I wanted to share this earlier, you guys, because as a reminder of the caliber of people that Harry is keeping company with. Do you remember earlier when they were saying Harry doesn't have any friends? Well, he's been knowing Bob Woodruff for, I believe, at least almost 10 years now, if not longer. Bob Woodruff says uh, Prince Harry brought the humor, the gratitude, and the sobering re reality of what it means to come home from war in this very heartfelt and funny video that he shared with all of us the night of Stand Up for Heroes. So that was that night when Harry uh, used a little self-deprecating humor uh, to express his individuality or his uniqueness standing up for the very few gingers that there are left in this world uh, or to at least fairly represent the gingers at uh, any given event. But it was a great um, jovial moment. And uh, Bob Woodruff actually just tweeted that today, even though uh, this happened, uh, what, about a week ago? Um, oh, let me see. Yeah, I guess about a week ago. So much has happened. But yeah, so he expressed his gratitude uh, for Harry and approval of the of his way of of you know bringing a little levity to the situation. So, um, and those are the people that Harry are hanging out with. He has plenty of his old friends from the UK, the real friends that didn't act funny because of him marrying the Duchess of Sussex. You know, some of the people that he's known for years, he said. And one of the interviews, I think, or was it on Oprah? I forget which one. But he said that sometimes, you know, he realized how different people were acting. He didn't notice it before. He didn't really have a reason to. But once Megan came along, um, you know, the, the knives came out. The, the real ugly uh, parts of his life, meaning some of his shady friends, that um, was going along with the rest of the, um, I'll just call them racists, the rest of the racists, the rest of the bigots, the rest of the um, family and friends. Just like when um, Angela of Liechtenstein, Princess Angela of Liechtenstein, there were some people in the family who said, oh my God, this is the beginning of the end. He's about to marry a black woman. And then there were other members in the family who was like, I'm going to the wedding. I even went to the other wedding in New York. They had a, I think they had a civil service in Liechtenstein. And then when they went to New York, they had the actual wedding. You know, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Have you ever heard of somebody having like a civil service or a commitment service, if you will, in one uh, day and then the next day or two? They have the actual wedding. People do that sometime, even though the tabloid media try to convince you otherwise. But people do that sometime. They'll do a civil service or a commitment service before the actual wedding. Even Charles went to the registrar's office for his wedding and then went to a actual church for a prayer service. So even Charles did that. But it wasn't a problem until what? Until somebody black was involved. Everything changes for some reason. People get weird when there's somebody black involved. And they try to disguise it by saying, no, no, no. It's just anti-American. It's not anti-black. No, that's not the problem. So there's Bob Woodruff. I believe that's back in 2014 with Prince Harry. And then there's a still photo of Harry from that speech he gave 
for the stand-up heroes. So he's been knowing Bob Woodruff for quite some time. And for those of you that don't know uh, Bob Woodruff, Bob Woodruff was a war correspondent. He uh, was working for ABC, as, and he served as anchor for a while. He also was a, an experienced war correspondent. And because of an IED, or was it IUD? IED? I, oh, boy, that's weird. Which one? Improvise. IED. Okay. Because of an IED, <laughs> you better get that right. Um, he um, suffered a severe head injury, and they thought he wasn't going to make it. They thought he was going to probably not even be able to function normally, but uh, it's been a slow and steady recovery. And um, so he's not working full time for ABC, you know, in front of the camera like he did in the past. But, um, you know, he was embedded with the American forces in Iraq, I believe it was, when he was injured. And um, so he's had the experience of being on the battlefield and being in harm's way, obviously. And uh, and from that experience. His life's mission has been to uh, stand up for the for the heroes. So he and his wife have been working hard doing that for some years. And I really, really admire them for that. So, hey, Church Nelly. Hope you're feeling better. Now, Tyler Perry, uh, grandfather, um, uh, godfather, rather, of Lily Bit Diana. Now, I have a couple sound bites. I'm sure that you all know that he said some really, really lovely things about the Sussexes and his goddaughter. And I'm going to share that with you. Oh, Lord, we're going to be on for three hours tonight, I promise you. Didn't mean to go on this long, but didn't know there was going to be all those pictures earlier. Definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Okay, now let me get to those sound bites. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know what I got to do. I got to go to my burner account to find it. Always got to have a burner account. It's not enough to have an account. Got to have a burner account. Just like the Royal Reporters. Oh, wait, wait. You do so much good in the world. Um, but one of the fascinating things that you did that I found out through watching another docu-series was that you basically rescued Harry and Meghan. And that to me is like, um, I mean, that was a massive undertaking and you didn't really know them at the time. You just sort of like, offered assistance. And, and I'm wondering, like, intuitively, what did you know or what did you feel about what their situation was? And the only reason I'll talk about this is because she talked about it, because anytime yeah. I'm, I'm reaching out and helping anybody, it's 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 their story. I feel like it's mine to tell. Right. No, that's the so, only reason I'm bringing it yeah, up is yeah. because I saw her talk about it. Yeah, but she, I, I, I got the tremendous sense, whelming it all was for her. I got the sense that, um, Listen, I know what it's like to have a father who is not great. So seeing some of the things he was doing, I felt that she was very much isolated and alone. And I couldn't imagine leaving America and this really, she had a really, really happy life. She was really happy. And I've, I've later found all of that out. But, and to go into this world of this, where everything is larger than life, even to this day, it's still larger than life for them, where everywhere she goes or whatever she does. So she puts on something, it sells out. It just, their photo, their paparazzi in the corners. So I just, I, I, I wanted to be a safe place, not only for her, but you know, there are many people who don't have a name or who are not a part of a Royal family who just need somebody to be there for, for them. So I sent her a note. We had this, everybody thought Oprah introduced this, but Oprah didn't even know that I reached out to them. Um, and I sent them a note through our, we had the same publicist years ago and um, just said, if you ever need anything, you know, here. And she called months later and just 
talk to me like I was that therapist you talked to and, and yeah. we just had a great yeah. conversation. So it, it's very important for people in this business to have a safe place to land, to have a place where they can trust and talk freely and get advice that's not going to be biased or So that was one part of the sound bite. I have another part. Let me get that ready. But, um, and um, let me see. There, there's one. Stay with me. I got another one. Or from somebody who wants something from them. And they hid out of my house for a long time. It was so great. Every day, every day that they were there, I'd look at, to see if anything's happening online. No, they don't even know. So weeks and weeks they were there. They were so happy. It was such a beautiful moment. Incredible. Yeah. And I think I think it's really important what you said. I, a lot of people um, have this misconception that if you're rich and famous or famous and rich or what, what have you, you have no problems. Yeah. And that... And that, you know, you should get over it, get, get over whatever your problem is and having a safe space to have privacy, yeah. to maybe bring your child home from the hospital quietly, or to have a friend to have a one-on-one -on -one with that, you know, isn't going to run to the tabloids and sell the story right. is like such, it seems like such a basic thing, but it's more than all the money and fame in the world. Yeah. Don't you agree? Yeah, especially in a world where everything that we do, we're supposed to share. There's Instagram, there's mm -hmm. Facebook, there's share everything, right. there's Twitter. Immediately tell me how you feel in so many characters, you know? So in a right. world where people are private and don't do that, everybody goes, what's wrong with you? Well, where are you? And then when people realize that they can trust it and it's a safe place, it, it grows into a beautiful thing. And are you godfather to their daughter? I am, to little Lily, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, so she's so cute. Oh, she's so beautiful. She's just so beautiful. Yeah. They make beautiful babies. That's all I'll say. They make some beautiful kids. Archie well, so and Lily are you. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, my son. So do too. you. Yeah. I'm okay. Um Godfather to their daughter. I am to little Lily, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, so she's so cute. Oh, she's so beautiful. She's just so beautiful. Yeah. They make beautiful babies. That's all I'll say. They make some beautiful kids. Archie well, so and Lily are you. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, my son. So do too. you. Yeah. I mean, your son is yeah. gorgeous. Okay, so I think that was it for um, what he mentioned about um, the Sussexes. So credit to Kelly Ripper. Kelly Ripper. Um, as you know, sometimes when I find something offensive, I will either put a potted fern, a ficus tree, or the occasional Persian rug I usually put a visually um, soft, usually um, living like um, plant in front of things that offend me. I am not uh, a big fan of Kelly Ripper. <laughs> Kelly Ripper, I, I just, well, anyway, that's her image there with a potted fern in front of it. Uh, if you want to hear the complete interview, I suppose you'd have to go to uh, whatever podcast that is. Let's talk off camera. Or as I like to say, try to talk through that potted fern. Um, and that's where you could hear it. So credit to Kelly Ripper. Um, whatever differences I have with her and her attitude and the way she worked, or, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say anything else, but uh, thanks for having Tyler Perry on and giving him a chance to, uh, okay, that was Kelly Ripper. So right here it says, I got off the phone. It took all, I took it all in rather. Um, then I called them back and I go, hold on a second. Does this mean I got to go over there and do all that in the church with them? because I don't want to do all that. And uh, that was Tyler Perry's reaction to becoming uh... <laughs> She makes me sick. Do you hear me? Sick! She makes me sick. Um, anyway, 
that was his reaction to becoming Godfather. He just did not want to um, have to deal with the royal family and all that phoniness and stuff. So um, that was his reaction when he was asked to be Godfather. And here you can see two men. The first one removed the security of his son and his son's family despite numerous threats. The other one, no relation, offered his home, safe transport there too, and security. Yet the first one is now the head of a church. Let that sink in. Uh, that's a quote from one of the squatties, by the way. To protect their, you know, social media site, I chose to just, you know, you know, sometimes I omit the name, but I definitely will not take credit for something that I did not say myself. That's not who I am. So that was one of the squatties. And there is a petite lily. Petite, that's French for small. La petite lily. Petite lily. En français, la petite lily. How adorable. And of course, eventually we got to get to the crown. So let's stay with this for a minute. I'm going to just take a look through your comments and then we'll move on. And oh, good God. Is that the only? Oh, all right. I see. Whew, I thought I still had a bunch of slides left. Uh, let me see how many I got left. Probably about 10. Uh, let me see. Just join to see Church Nelly. Uh, you are healed, babe. Good. Oh. There we go. You know, is it uh, Aima Nwa Padulu? There we go. Thank you so much for your comment. And uh, Tyler must uh, be hated by the derangers. Oh, sure. Definitely, no doubt. Okay. Uh, okay, not a lot about uh, Tyler, I suppose, but that's okay. No pressure. Uh, little Lily. Oh, yeah, that's Tyler Perry's nickname for uh, Lily Diana. Little, little, little Lily is so beautiful, just like her mama. Amen to that. Okay, all right, so let's move on then. So uh, The Crown Demise is a glittering metaphor for Netflix's downward trajectory. Uh, let me see. Peter Morgan's sweeping royal drama has gone from being the jewel in Netflix crown to a symbol of the platform's decline in popularity and quality, writes Nick Hilton. Uh, where did it all go wrong? Well... If you want to know where it went wrong, you need look no further than the same type of co-conspirators that was trying to destroy suits. That the same pressure that the royal household put on suits to rewrite the script is the same pressure that Peter Morgan went through. Although Peter Morgan, I believe, is a willing accomplice, accomplice that is, uh, I mean, after all, it was a masterpiece, right? And um, they had a good thing. I mean, it was made so well. The production value was just as interesting as the storyline. The storyline, to be fair, really wrote itself. All it took was a little imagination to take actual events and make something extraordinary out of it. Uh, no slight to the people that did the writing, mostly Peter Morgan, I suppose. Well, you had that to work with, but where you really run into trouble is here. This is why there's a problem. How Prince Charles once joked with the crown creator and writer Peter Morgan when he was presented with a CBE. Now, the crown has been on for how long? And this article is from what? That's from 2020. 
Is that is that when he received his uh, his chocolate medal, or was it before that? I know this article is from November 2020. We would have had to have been in the throes of a global pandemic. We did not have the vaccine until about January of 2021. So they're unmasked. I don't know what the exact date is when he got his uh, medal, but I'm sure that it probably predates the production of the crown, maybe. Or, well, Charles didn't really come in until later. Uh, like, you know, the Charles we all know and despise in some cases. Uh, so either way, you have to imagine that there must be some type of influence there. Um, I mean, there he is proudly displaying the CBE that he received from the royal family, from Charles. Princess died dark side, doesn't get a look in. Well, that was back in what? Um, 2013? Wait, how long has that been on? It ain't been since 2013. Prince Charles cut out friends to meet Princess Diana, inexhaustible. Uh, demand save marriage. Uh, okay, that oh, that was I'm sorry, that was written uh, back in 2019. Yes, yeah, so um, the crown was on, right? And then there's an actual picture of, of Diana and him. And then up there, you can see that Debicki is that her name playing Princess Diana. She's very tall. I mean, Diana was very tall, but this lady seems to be taller than Diana. And that is supposed to be Prince Harry, right? And um, we all know that Diana had thick, beautiful, lush hair. Um, that, of course, is a wig and not a very good one, I think, but it, it gets the job done. But yeah, so that, that's that. So right there. Um, yeah, that looks wiggy. That looks very wiggy. Uh, but yeah, so that's the guy. And the actor... The actor that is playing Charles is a friend of his. He's a friend of Charles, right? And Peter Morgan is a friend of Charles. So all of that being considered, the character assassination and the lack of depth of Diana's character in uh, The Crown is disturbing. They have not favorably portrayed Diana. Season five of The Crown, they they should call it um, the, the Crown Prince, which is what they call the Prince of Wales in other countries. They should call it the Crown Prince because it was all done to make Charles look good. Yes, they took us down Tampon Road, you know, you couldn't avoid the tampon gate. But after that, everything was all Charles all the time, and nothing made him look bad. Nothing. So they really sold us out, and that's why nobody's watching. That's why nobody's watching. And if you ask me, it's deliberate. Whatever influence that um, Netflix would have over this production... They don't seem to exercise that influence very much because last year was awful. And I'm going to watch this year. I'm going to watch all of it. I'm going to watch all of it. But I'm telling you, it's it, it's not good. If people are saying that this year is worse than last year, then you know it's a big dud. You know it's a big dud. They have really done a hatchet job on the crown. They took a perfectly good production and ruined it. I mean, ruined it. Yeah. So, uh, and it's been reported that Peter Morgan has not read Spare at all. You would think, you would think that either you or someone on your staff would have read Spare, you or someone on your staff, just to make sure that you're getting it right. 
But that's never been the point. As a matter of fact, they more than stress the fact that this is not a, a docudrama. It is taking reference from the royal family. But I mean, of course, nobody suspects, oh, these are the conversations that they had. Just like when it comes to the movie Elizabeth, you don't suspect that, oh, that's what Queen Elizabeth I actually said. I mean, there are notes and letters and stuff that, you know, kind of covers a broadly the events, but the day to day conversations, who knows what that sounds like? So, um, yeah, they've done a hatchet job. Oh, uh, oh, let me see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good looking. He's good looking. Uh, much better looking than what Charles deserves. I mean, they really went out of their way to cast somebody to play Charles that would be as flattering as possible. And Charles, no doggone well, he don't look nothing like that guy. I mean, look at Charles. Even when he was younger, he looked almost alien like. But this guy, no, he's. He looks uh he looks like uh some retired uh, uh Marlboro man or something, whereas Charles, not so much. I mean, Charles got those big hands and childbearing hips and those unfortunate ears. The only reason why Charles' ears don't look as big as they used to is because all that face caught up to it. He got so much more face, you know, them jowls and stuff his face caught up to his ears. So that's why we don't notice him as much. But yeah, between them big hands and childbearing hips and, and, uh, <laughs> that blotchy red rosacea face of his. Um, this is why I can never meet the Sussexes, by the way. This is why I should never be allowed to be in the same room with Harry and Meghan. Um, plausible deniability. Just remember that. Plausible deniability. Uh, let me see. The line of, uh, about no half in and half out about Diana seems to ring true of the firm in this modern time. I thought of Prince Harry being denied. Yeah, I guess they really want to have total control. They really want to have the full control. And what's so silly about it, though, is that on those certain occasions when you are having a gathering of the family, it really makes no sense to push every extended family member away, you know, it doesn't make sense that they do that. Not that I'm trying to help them and not that they would listen to me, but it just seems so ridiculous to, um, to I guess, uh, a purge or avoid or whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's take a look from yesterday. Let's take a look from yesterday. Let me see here. Okay, so this is the queen for a troop in the colors. You know, how many people are on that balcony? 50 people? Got to be about 50 people. Uh, and this is the queen uh, the next year. Uh, let me see, that was 2019. Okay, so 2018, I was there that day. 2019, I was not there. And then let's fast forward to 2023 with that slim down monarchy. Fourteen people on the balcony. Fourteen people. You've gone from over 50 people to 14 people on the balcony. But yet you need more money. You need more money. Not need more money. You're going to get more money. Yeah. It's assured that 
uh, the sovereign will never have to go to parliament to beg for money again. They will routinely receive a cost of living raise, that which is not afforded to the common citizens, I'm sorry, subjects, is easily afforded to the people who don't need the money, right? Okay. Oh, wait. All right. So uh, I don't know what the deal is here, but is it just me or do you see someone has painted the image of Diana and Charles and William? I suppose that's William. Uh, someone has painted that. And when William came to visit, I don't think he acknowledged it at all. But um, that's William in Manchester. And this is one of the few photos where there's only a few people of color, but mostly it was all blacks all the time. I mean, I didn't know that was there was that many black people in Britain until William went to Manchester today. Reach out and touch somebody black and make sure all the cameras see that. Reach out and touch somebody black and make sure all the cameras see that. Yes, that's what he did. He went to go and reach out and touch someone black. And check this out. Prince William named sexiest bald man of 2023, according to study. Oh, God. So somehow, somehow, William has moved into first place. He's gone from sixth place to first place in one year. Yeah, in just one year. Now, to make this make sense, we have to ignore all of that testosterone that you see lined up on the screen. And we have to pretend like they don't exist. Matter of fact, we have to pretend like about 4 billion other men on the planet do not exist. Some of them, of course, bald. I don't know what the exact ratio is, but uh, Prince William named sexiest bald man of 2023, according to study. Uh huh. So back in 22, 2022, sexiest bald man of the 2022 revealed there was Vin Diesel, Stanley Tucci, Samar Moore, Pitbull, then Prince William, Jason Statham. Bruce Willis, Joe Rogan, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and Mike Tyson. Uh, Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah, Mike Tyson was in that band. What was the name of that band, uh, Lydia? What was the name of that band he was in? <laughs> he was in that band. I forgot what the name of the band was, but he was in a band. Anyway. Um, you have to ignore all of them, um, either bef above or below the number six, and just think, oh, no, oh, no, clearly it's got to be William. Clearly it's got to be William. Well, they have, they have paid a lot of money. They have subliminally planted this idea, um, you know, to older people that uh, will sit at home and um, answer the phone calls from the pollsters, you know, pensioners, if you will, uh, pensioners, yeah. They wait for some cat lady sitting at home with like 50 cats in her house to answer the phone when they, you know, send out the uh, questionnaire. Those are the people uh, that they depend on to answer those calls. And yes, somehow those people that were polled in this particular poll, um, I believe that, you know, they, but they paid for it. You guys know 
that they paid a lot of money um, to get that um, that vote. They have been planting that subliminal message of sexy bald head William, uh, international man of mystery, the sexiest bald man alive. You know, they've been planting that um, for years. So finally, it has paid off. They have gotten their money's worth. Um, now, let <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, I guess I'm ready to move on. Uh, you would have to ignore, you would really have to ignore all of these other incredibly good looking guys to uh, make it be William. Like, for instance, uh, is that Boris Cujo? And um, yeah, that's Boris Cujo, right? I think so. Uh, and of course, Shamar Moore. Didn't he used to be on The Young and the Restless? And uh, what about uh, Storm Z? What about Storm Z? Um, Stanley Tucci, uh, Jason Statham. Sta St look at that, I'm doing it again. And this other guy over there on the left. And what about Pitbull and uh, Common? Michael Jordan? A lot of good-looking bald men out there. You'd have to ignore all of them to make William make sense. I mean, yeah, he's um, incandescent with rage, if you're into that. I mean, I've never had my fingers broken before, but if I was into that, I suppose I could get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's some people out there that would allow him to break their fingers repeatedly. But uh, you guys, let me just tell you something. When and if Harry ever reaches that point where he decides to just let it go, um, I'm not afraid of that moment. I'm pretty sure Harry will not be afraid to face that moment when it's necessary. Right now, I think what he has frames his face rather nicely. But if he decides that, you know, he wants to do that, I'll support him. And if he decides to uh, stay the way it is, I'll support that too. So um, it's, it's his call. It's his hair. It's his call. Okay. And with that, you guys, I am done. That was our last slide for the night. And um, yeah, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for sharing the joy of Megan's lovely red carpet moment. Um, that was a nice surprise, and I'm so glad to share that with you all. Um, let me see. Yeah, that's our Megan. That's our Megan. Yes. Yes, queen. Yes. Yes, queen. You serve. She's serving it, you all. She's serving it. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, again, warning of flash photography. Again, flash photography warning. Uh-oh, that's not it. Yes, walk, walk, walk. You go, girl. Yes. Yes, yes, diva. Because you are, you are one of our power of women honorees. You are one of our alumni. And <laughs> we're so thrilled because this is a night that is about supporting women and the idea that it's important to do so, especially in the entertainment industry. Why has that been so important for you to have that support and to give that support back? Oh, gosh. I mean, this industry is just so special. And you see how many women use the platform that they have and just channel it for good. And I think as more we support each other, it just amplifies the work, amplifies our community. I'm just thrilled to be back in it and to be able to 
sit in this room, be in such good company tonight, and also to focus so much on how it's the crossroads of entertainment meeting philanthropy. So really close to my heart. It's gonna be a fun night. It's gonna be a really good time because it's full of women whose art has inspired us all this year. But I will say, I'm sure you've probably noticed that a certain show, Suits, has become a phenomenon yet again on Netflix. 45 billion minutes have been watched. Is that right? 45 billion as of this week. We just found out 24 minutes ago that that is the number. Who's counting? But, who, but literally, who's counting? What do you think is behind this, this renewed love for the show? Why has it become such a phenomenon again? I have no idea. It's, it was great to work on. Such a great cast and crew. We had a really fun time. I was on it for seven seasons, so quite a bit. But it's just, it's, it's hard to find a show you can binge watch that many episodes of these days. So that could have something to do with it. But good shows are everlasting. That's what you're doing now. You have now come into Hollywood in a professorial capacity. What is inspiring you? And, and as you're kind of looking to make these new projects, what is the thing that is, you know, driving the, the work that you're going to put out into the business? Things that make people feel, I was going to say good, but it's more than that. Things that make people feel something, right? And feel a sense of community. But we have so many exciting things on the slate. I can't wait until we can announce them. But um, I'm just really proud of what we're creating. My husband is loving it too. It's really fun. We're here anytime you want to make those announcements. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll figure out. We'll, we'll get in touch then. Yeah. We're thrilled to have you here as one of our our honorees, our alumni. Really so nice to see that. you. No, it was great to be Thank here. you Thank so you. much. All right. <clears throat> Variety, power of okay. women. Um, gonna take a quick look and see if I see anything else. If I see anything else to share. So, so far it was Variety, and then there was the Entertainment Tonight. That one was rather short. Um, but yeah, let me see if I find anything else before we go. Uh, but yes, I'm done, you guys. So for those of you that need to get your rest on, please go ahead and get yourself some sleep. Don't want you to be anything but peak performance tomorrow. And for those of you from the UK that are just starting your day, I um, hope you have a very productive day and an e equally productive weekend. Even if it means going to have some fun, give it your best. Uh, okay. All right. Let me see. Okay, so I'm going to one of my reliable sources, see if she has anything else. Okay, she's got the E.T. We've done E.T. Dunning. That's so sweet. Mom's night out. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much Thank you. Yeah, that was it. They just said mom's night out. Megan, how excited are you to be here tonight? Oh, gosh, it's so great. You look stunning. That's so sweet. Mom's <laughs> night out. Exactly. Thank so much you. Fun. All right, so that was E.T. And I don't see any other ones. So, yeah, those are the only two interviews I saw. Well, you guys, I am going to go over to Spaces so I can listen to everybody enjoying um, talking about this. And uh, I do thank you for spending the time. Thank you all very much. Uh, apparently, I have a list. Thank you, B. Martem. Maureen Legs. Oh, Maureen, thank you for the belated birthday. Uh, Connie Bomber. And uh, let's see. B. Martim again. Legs, Legs, Vargas, Legs, Lorna Williams, and Sean with that uh, remarkable um, comment from the our um, late queen, QE2. And let me see how that compares to my other list. Okay. Huh. All right. So I'm looking for that one. All right. Looks like we got the same thing. Thank you very much. Um, Sherry Ware. Okay. 
All right, so I don't see anything new to share with you all, but trust me, if I find something interesting, I will definitely share it. Thank you all so much for watching Royal Sussex. Thank you, moderators, as always, for keeping this a very safe space. And uh, thank you all for your memberships and your contributions, your likes, your dislikes, for sharing. Um, and, and not just sharing, um, you know, the link with other people, but sharing your comments. That has been very helpful because just look how many times I'm like, oh, wait, what speech? Then I find that there's a not speech, but um, interview. I find that there's an interview to share. So it's those kind of things that uh, makes this very, very engaging. So thank you all. And um, let's see, we will definitely end with the um, Madam Duchess. Uh, yeah, apparently it seems to be okay. It seems to be okay. Uh, so far, so good. Good night, Compton Cali gal. Oh, you're welcome, Connie Bomber. Thank you for being here. Have an amazing day. Yeah, right, right. Megan is, oh, she sounds awesome. She just, uh, she has a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. Thank you, Cookies and Cream. All right. All right. So, 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 where am I going here? All right, Diana. Um, you know, we're not going to let anybody forget your contribution and also the rock of the Sussex family. As reported in the Daily Mail two days after I said it on Royal Sussex, <laughs> I still won't ever let that uh get away from me. They, I literally said it, and two days later, they referred to her as the rock of the Sussex family. Cannot believe it. So good night to the Daily Mail writer or reporter that's listening right now. May you rot. Um, may that whole paper go down the tubes. Okay. And our last word of the day is... No bad energy. Yeah, I'll keep it simple. No bad energy. Okay, good night, you all. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Oh, let's take it from the top. <laughs>